as Rick came down off the jacks. And look, he comes out once again in the top spot. And Rick came out 5.2 seconds back. Jack makes a good point, though, about why Rick let Al buy him. To draft his teammate, even for just a few laps, could improve his fuel situation should that become critical. He and Dredd, as you recall, early in the race, positioned just like this and drafted each other, gaining an advantage back then. Well, the trek is underway, and when it's done, what a remarkable accomplishment it will be. Six men, 4,000 miles in seven months through the summer in Antarctica. It's the Trans-Antarctica. Sam Posey is part of our coverage. It will come up again August 20th, Sunday, with a one-hour primetime special beginning at 7 Eastern. That's two weeks from now, of course, but, Paul, uh, well, when you said when it is finished, I wouldn't be so absolutely sure they're going to make it. You know, there's a incredible challenge to this expedition, which, if it succeeds, would be the first ever non-motorized uh, trip across Antarctica. ABC cameras are there. Bob Beatty, see Ari Leyendike, Bob Beatty has been there uh, for three weeks, enduring incredible temperatures and a situation where, which sees him almost completely out of touch with the rest of the world. We're going to be following that uh, for several months now. It's very exciting. Interesting scenario when they come back because Mario is lined up just behind Michael and will try to get around onto the leader lap. It said the only thing that changes in a big boy's life is the price of his toys. Well, if that's true, then the IndyCar set may be the winners in the end. In the racing world, there is a compulsive fascination with anything mechanical. Motorhomes are outfitted like Cleopatra's barge. Phones, stereos, VCRs, and yes, even fax machines. This is entry-level stuff these days in the game of whose toys are best. But there is a practical side to the toys because racing people spend six months of the year on the road, and the toys can make the nomads feel more at home. A bedroom and a barbecue. An ice chest full of your sponsor's popsicles. Aha, fool you. Pit equipment offers an excuse for more toys. And with luck, you might even find a friend to play with. A recent mania is for cellular phones. Talking, riding around, and showing off. All are taken for granted in this world, a world in which the instincts and impulses of childhood seem very much alive. It is a world in which kids have grown up, and so have their toys. the toys of racing as Ari Leyendijk is now out of the pits in seventh place but four laps behind the leader of the race who is now Michael Andretti as he tries to come up to speed so he can join the rest of the field which is behind the pace car already turned down on the pit road and the green flag comes out Mario Andretti is lined up right alongside Michael and will Michael let Mario his dad back onto the lead lap well, he surely does. Michael's the leader of the race, but Mario gets his lap back. He's now two miles behind the race, running in third place. Rick Mears is in second. And all this transpired because they, for some reason they brought Rick just in a little bit late that last time, enabled Michael to get ahead and put Mario a little bit ahead as far as the serial goes. And right now, Mario is back on the second or in the same lap, technically, Paul. On board with Michael Andretti. Let's go to the pits. This report from Jack Aroos. Well, Paul, as we watch the action out on the racetrack, the report on, on Ari Leyendijk is it was not a blown engine. It was a small seal that connects the hose from the radiators towards the rear of the engine. It popped loose, pulled all the water out of the car. They filled it back up with water, replaced that O-rig, and he's back out on the racetrack. So if there's no damage to the engine in the time that was out, he should continue to be able to race. But he's down in the field running seven. Well, that was at 12,000 RPM, though, there's a real good chance that damage would happen in no more than, say, a second to two seconds, Paul. Another pit stop of note. You saw Emerson Fittipaldi some time ago in the pits for replacement of a constant velocity joint. He was in the pits for 19 minutes and five seconds. Not your typical IndyCar pit stop. 
Now, it's really hard to change a CP joint, and it's a dead blur in Hotchins. You can't believe it down there. Well, Rick Mears is trying to work his way down behind Al Unzer and trying to catch Michael Andretti, the leader. Go ahead, Jack. Paul, here's the deal. They normally would have just retired the car, but with attrition as high as it's been, they have calculated, they being Mo Nunn and Pat Patrick and Emerson Fittipaldi, the possibility exists, even though there's so many laps down, they could finish 12th and gain one single point. It could be the difference between winning and losing the world championship this year. Now the speeds, Paul, have been over 222 miles an hour by the leaders. That's Rick Mears, Mario Andretti, or Michael Andretti. So we're really having one of the fastest races we've ever seen. It's the yellow flags that make it look like it's going slow. And right, let's try and reset the situation at the front of the field here. Michael Andretti is just in front. Rick Mears is closing down only uh, over a second behind Michael. Mario Andretti got around Michael on that restart and is running in front of Michael, but about two and a half miles back in reality, about two miles back in third place. Teo Fabi needs to get out and get around Michael so that he can continue to chase Mario Andretti as well. Those cars all running right together on the course, but two of them, Mario Andretti and Teo Fabi trying to close the distance on the leader, Mario Michael Andretti and Rick Mears, who is in second. Now it's a yellow flag that could make a difference right now because remember, if they have a yellow, Mario will be able to come around. He'll be then right back in the same lap and competitive or capable of winning the race again. Notice that once again, Rick Mears has taken up station behind Al Unser Sr., who in turn is right behind Dale Bobby. Remember, Al Unser now seems to be playing a tactical role in this. Well, no, not for long. <laughs> so much for that idea. No, I don't think they're doing a team deal because Al's way too far back right now, Sam. I think it's just a deal where Rick is trying not to burn the car down. He's still got quite a few miles to go to the end. Rick, of course, is one of the fastest cars on the track, maybe the fastest right now. One of the key players at the moment is that green and white car of Tail Bobby as he would like to get around Michael Andretti and get his lap back so in case of a caution period, he can close down on the third place car of Mario Andretti and the leaders first through fourth can all close up. Rick Mears seems, for the moment at least, content to keep station about 1.2 seconds behind the leader of the race, Michael Andretti. And there is Rick Mears as he flies down inside tail Bobby and gets his position back. Bobby had gotten past Mears for a while there. What they're doing right now, most of the cars, is they have two top gears, Paul. They have a, a top gear that's for cruising and a top gear that's for racing. Rick is probably running in his cruising gear right now, trying to make mileage. Remember, you have fewer yellow flags the longer the race goes. So they need to make good mileage now and aim towards the latter part of the race at this point. Dale Bobby dropping a little further back, and Val Unzer got behind him as well. You speak of gears, uh, Bobby. Rick Mears is himself a perfect gear in the Penske machine. Drives the racing car, and that's all he does for Penske, unlike Sullivan who uh, has some entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial yearnings of his own. As Rick Mears moves past, picks up the lead once again. Continued fight at the front of this field. Rick Mears battling now with Michael Andretti. And the Penske team wants that battle go into the first turn. They're still not sure what happened there. Now remember, Nick, Rick, excuse me, has to get ahead of Mario. That puts him back another lap again. Rick is probably knowing for sure. He's got to get ahead of Mario, so if it goes yellow, he puts Mario still back a lap. And that's what he's trying to do right now. Well, Michael Andretti dropped off the pace quite a bit on that last lap, only ran it at 214 miles an hour. They were both running in traffic. Rick Mears clocked the same lap at 217 miles an hour. So Rick is now definitely faster once again. On board with Bobby Rahal. Rahal is running in 11th place. He's well behind the lead as well. Just a head up on the course. Those are the leaders of the race. Rick Mears. Michael Andretti as their fight continues. Yes, Rick is going to try to pass him here pretty quick. Working up on him in the turn. You can see he seems to have a little bit of turn speed on Michael. And on Mario Andretti. Andretti. And Rick works around Mario. Mario trying to hold on by his fingertips to that lap. And no, Rick puts him yet another lap down.